This past week, a collection of states came together and filed a lawsuit in which a federal judge in Texas found that the Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional by the way it's designed. Now, this is not going to be the first time that the ACA is challenged. There have been numerous lawsuits and appeals ever since it became enshrined into law, ever since the market started reacting to the fact that the ACA was in place, Costs have been prohibitive for private insurance and the ACA alike for the majority of people who have been forced to buy it by the individual mandate, and there have been calls on principle and on practice on it to repeal the law from almost the first day that we talked about it, even before we heard Nancy Pelosi say her famous line that you have to pass it to see what's in it. But the federal judge who found the ruling that has caused us to have this newfound conversation about the ACA focused in on one of the most contested parts of the law, and indeed a part of the law that was mostly repealed through executive order as soon as President Trump came into office, and that is the individual mandate. The individual mandate is the stipulation that essentially keeps the Affordable Care Act moving forward. According to the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, you are required to carry insurance no matter what your situation or you are required to pay a fine, which is considered to be a tax, which is what made this constitutional in the first place, if you are not able to afford to do so. When our GOP-controlled Congress was finally able to come together and find something that they could repeal out of the ACA, it was the individual mandate. They reduced the responsibility of the mandate to zero, even though they were forced by the language of the ACA to keep it in place. This is important to the ruling out of Texas simply because that is the portion of the law that the Texas judge found unconstitutional. Even though the mandate was zero, there is still language in the law that forces us to carry health insurance as citizens of the United States, and that's the unconstitutionality of it. Furthermore, because of the fact that this part of the law is so deeply enshrined into the wording of the law itself, to the point that GOP lawmakers couldn't remove it entirely, only reducing the penalties and fines to zero, that is why the Texas judge now wants to go forward and rule that the entire law is unconstitutional rather than just pulling out the unconstitutional part and trying to adapt the law system around that one small missing piece. While this decision is still in its very earliest forms, we have been seeing the same partisan reactions that we would have come to expect from such a decision going forward, especially as soon as the news broke on social media where people could start discussing it. Social media conservatives and GOP lawmakers and the president himself have all come together to laud the Texas court judge and celebrate his name for the fact that he has found a way to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, or so they believe. These people have used this as a rallying cry to try and gin up the GOP base in order to try and push for a rally and get this going forward. Democrats, both on social media and in Congress alike, however, have dug their heels in and tried to find ways to stop this law from going away. And that was something to be expected as well, considering that this is the lasting legacy of the Obama administration, which has been the rallying cry for most of these online progressives and Congress people alike. Nancy Pelosi has said that as soon as she is the Speaker of the House, she is going to secure funding to keep the government open, which we talked about on Sunday, and then she is going to do everything that she can to try and make sure that the ACA is protected and stays enshrined in law for years and years to come. It's very important to keep in mind right now that the celebration or the fighting may be premature at this point, as this was not an injunction to force the government to stop enforcing or practicing the law that's on the books. This was merely a ruling on the constitutionality of the law as it sits, 
And the next logical step that follows after that would be for this law to go before the Fifth Circuit in New Orleans, which I believe is already scheduled at this point. From there, the judges in the Fifth Circuit will hear the case and decide whether the idea needs to be upheld and go on to the Supreme Court for further review, or whether it should be overturned and everything goes back to the way that it was. All indicators are showing that this is not a case that the Fifth Circuit is in any hurry to hear if they hear it at all. Most people that are talking about the case are showing the fact that the Fifth Circuit will not even be able to take a vote as to whether or not they hear it until spring of 2019 or possibly later, and then they would go through the normal process, thus carrying the process out even further. And from there, it needs to go to the Supreme Court, where again, it needs to get the votes to be heard, as we just saw with the Planned Parenthood case that came before the Supreme Court, in which Kavanaugh decided that he didn't want to hear the case even. So if it even makes it through the Fifth Circuit Court, we are still looking at the wild cards of Justice Roberts, who initially decided to side with the ACA the first time it was held by the Supreme Court, and Kavanaugh, who is much more of a wild card than a lot of people who were fans of Kavanaugh during his hearings and confirmation would like to believe at this point. In summary, this ruling has a long and hard road ahead of it, and there are a lot of instances along the road in which this ruling could just be killed outright and we never hear about it again. So this is something that, as an informed public, we need to stay on top of and keep paying attention to and keep spreading news stories around social media and media in order to make sure that we don't forget the fact that this is out there. But once this is through, and should this be deemed unconstitutional, we also have to think about what the logical next step is. I am in a camp with a lot of very libertarian people that believes that the free market going back into the healthcare market would solve a lot of the problems in the healthcare market. And I really think that it would be nice if the insurance companies had to sell us insurance again, rather than just assuming that we were going to go out and buy it because there is a law that is compelling us to do so. But unfortunately, it's not that simple. Just like Social Security, just like Medicare, just like Medicaid, and any other number of state, local, and federal programs out there in which we support some of our less productive and less financially advantaged people out there, once government benefits are involved and people have grown dependent on these benefits, it's really hard to get them off of the benefits and take them away from the people who do need them the most. There's the social aspect of it, but there's also the fact that this would cripple some of these people who have not had a way to go out and transition into a job, whether by choice or by force, in today's market. Because of the way that the ACA is structured, and because of the fact that there are people that are actually using it, and the open enrollment just ended at this point, in order for us to repeal the ACA, or if there was an injunction that was served in order to prevent us from using the ACA anymore, we would have to have a split Congress come together and try and come up with a replacement for it. It's unfortunate, but it is a fact of life in modern society, especially with the fact that people are depending on it. What this would mean is that if there was an injunction issued tomorrow, or let's say for devil's advocacy after the new Congress comes into place, because obviously nothing's going to happen anymore until the new Congress comes into place, we would have two years of the House trying to push forward bills for single payer, and the Senate turning them down, and the Senate countering and trying to repeal everything about every health care cost, bringing us back to free market, and the House bringing all of those down, nothing getting to the President's desk, and nothing getting considered for law, and no compromise available from either House. Meanwhile, our already currently precarious health care system, both in the care side and the insuring side, would go to an utter collapse, and most of us wouldn't have any sort of health care or health insurance. 
Ultimately, the decisions rest in the courts right now, so it's on us to sit back and watch what happens and hope for the best no matter which side or which camp we happen to fall in. Do you think the ACA is constitutional or unconstitutional? And what do you think is going to happen after these series of rulings go through the courts from Texas federal court all the way up to the Supreme Court? I always welcome a thoughtful and positive discussion in the comment section below, especially over on Twitter. That is at Ed's blog Twitter with a one in place of the I. Thanks as always for listening to this show and supporting this channel. And remember, never take the words of bloggers, podcasters, or journalists as gospel. Find all the facts and draw your own conclusions. Take care. You're